Um, I also discuss, well, many people want to know how it is I became a deranged millionaire, and the answer is very simple. I had a lot of big ideas, dare I say, million dollar ideas. And before I could put any of them into action, I won the lottery and got a job on Apple Computer Ads. <laughs> and that did it. So I have all these ideas that are left over that, uh, that I can just give away to you. Because I don't need them anymore. And you seem nice. <laughs> the biggest one was the one from my first book when I said, anyone wants a million dollars, go out immediately and write a screenplay called All Animals Versus All Humans. <laughs> right. The birds but everything. <laughs> the only trick, the only reason I won't get into this one, because it's too much work, the only thing that's hard about it is how does it last longer than 45 seconds? <laughs> uh, my other big idea, uh, 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 penny farthing motorcycles. <laughs> because regular motorcycles are not dangerous enough. <laughs> and this one that I'm gonna share with you now, it's a, it's a reality television show. Now look, I know there are a lot of reality television shows out there. And I hate to break this to you though, they're not real. <laughs> no. A lot of the situations are staged. They use editing to make normal people seem somewhat less hateful for television. <laughs> All of the food they eat is wax. <laughs> For insurance reasons, I suppose. <laughs> if you've ever seen the TLC channel, the Tender Loving Care channel, <laughs> you've probably seen shows like Little People in a Big World, or Little People Living Together, Little People Solving Crimes, <laughs> Little People Rescuing Pit Bulls. That one felt like it came out of a bingo ball. Do you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> Hundreds of premises, pick two. <laughs> Hate to break it to you, most of those little people, normal sized, <laughs> they've been made to seem like little people through a combination of uh, uh, fa a false perspective and uh, uh, surgery. <laughs> Again, for insurance reasons, I suppose. But my show is gonna be different, because my show is not gonna be afraid to get real. We're gonna deal with some serious topics. We're gonna find people who are really struggling in their lives, and they might be struggling with depression or substance abuse. Uh, maybe they can't stop spending money on figurines. <laughs> or cruises. <laughs> and mother who doesn't know how to use the internet. Maybe they're uh, someone from another reality television show who was forced to become a little person <laughs> for the TLC channel. Whatever the case may be, you will be amazed and heartbroken by their stories. And you will wonder how it is possible that they could ever get their lives together and start being productive again. You'll think it's not possible. And that's when I come in, usually through the window. <laughs> we think it'll be through a window. We think I'll either smash through a plate glass window, scaring them, uh, or reveal that I've been living in their walls for nine months. <laughs> Watching them through the eyes in their oil paintings. <laughs> but either way, they'll be very surprised to see me. And they'll be like, John Hodgman, you're on television. You must be here to solve all my problems. And I will say, no way. That's your job, surgically altered little person. I can help you, but you're going to have to do the hard work. But I promise you this, together, we'll do it. And that's when they start crying. I hire someone to hug them. And then we put a bag over their heads and put them into the back of a van and drive them to a town they've never been to before where they can begin an entirely new life as competitive hoarders. by Robert Louis Stevenson, <laughs> starring John Hodgman. We're gonna get a lot of brand awareness out of that title. It was in the public domain, so we took it. 
And uh, unlike other reality shows where they try to hide the fact that the contestants are coached to say certain things, we actually show them in the confessional holding the script that I've written for them. And in fact, I have the script here for the first episode. Whoa. And, uh, and I, I need to ask some people to stage. Are Francis and Adrian here? <laughs> Could you come on up? Oh. And uh, Rob and Tanya, are you, are you here? And uh, Famous Tracy, are you here, Famous Tracy? Wouldn't it be awful if Famous Tracy was skipping? No, there she is. Come on up, guys. So here's what I want you to do. Very nice. So you may recognize all these people from last time. Uh, that's right. Uh, Adrian and, and Francis, you may recognize as cream gravy and brown gravy <laughs> from, uh, from, the, from the gravy dispute in Judge John Hodgman and Steve. And Rob and Tanya, you may recognize as uh, Christmas music at the appropriate time, Christmas, versus Christmas music uh, starting uh, on Labor Day, right? Was that what? Seasonal music. And Famous Tracy, of course, is Famous Tracy. And uh, I have this kind of the first of the first episode, and I hope you guys will help me read it, okay? Um, it's, it's designed to be as awkward as possible, so don't worry if it's a completely cold read. Uh, Francis, you'll be Amy. Uh, Adrian, you'll be Jeff. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Tanya, you'll be Gary Busey. Uh, you'll be Little Mike. <laughs> Rob and Tracy, do you mind two pages? Right, you'll be Big Mike. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this microphone uh, to you, Amy. Go right out there and tell us your inspiring story. I will need a microphone, and I'm going to use this one, please. Hello? Oh, good. All right. Are you ready? I'm pulling up my pants, so let's go. <laughs> When John Hodgman told me that I was being driven with a bag over my head to Greenfield, Massachusetts, at first I was like, what now? But then I knew- Okay, hang on, hang on. Great, great so far. Uh, just a little note if you want it. Uh, Amy is kind of sassy. So like she wouldn't say, what now? She would be like, what now? You know what I mean? You want to just try it again from the top? When John Hodgman told me that I was being driven with a bag over my head to Greenfield, Massachusetts, at first I was like, what now? Yeah, great. <laughs> but then I did a quick search on my e my eVoyageCheckPlus.com. Yeah, we, do, we do a lot of product placement in the show. <laughs> my eVoyage Check point, what is it? Uh, my eVoyageCheckPlus.com, and there are dashes between all the words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That the, URL cost a lot of money. <laughs> the new social network, Hub Portal for Judging Small Towns and Local Businesses, and I checked out all the reviews and photos. Many of them were like, Greenfield is not worth the money. The portions are too small and the service is snotty. Bunch of complainers. <laughs> but then there were some sponsored links that John Hodgman had paid for. And they told a different story. <laughs> when I learned about the beautiful countryside and foliage, the amazing restaurants and nightlife, and the BJ's Wholesale Club, I was like, ah, yes, I can do this. It's on, Greenfield. Very nice. Thank you very much, Amy. context uh, for those of you uh, who don't know, uh, Greenfield, Massachusetts is a shithole. All right. <laughs> Jeff. Look, I'm not going to say it was ever my dream to be driven around with a burlap sack over my head, and, and I still don't understand why they refuse to feed me. And when I ask for water, they soak me with a hose. They said it was for insurance reasons. Insurance reasons. <laughs> but I will say this. I didn't expect the ride in the brand new, completely windowless Ford Creepo line. Is that Creepo line or Creepo line? Okay, Creepo line. Okay, check it. To be the brand that. new, completely windowless Ford Creepo line. <laughs> I didn't expect the Ford Creepo line to be that smooth. For a long time, I was like, when are we going to get going? And that's when they said, we have been driving for hundreds and hundreds of miles. 
This is an incredible band. It's a nice ride. Thank you very much, Jeff. <laughs> Gary Busey? Gary Busey. <laughs> Tanya, are you able to do a Gary Busey impersonation? I don't think so. Good. <laughs> Yeah, if you just if you just sort of weave back and forth quietly, that's kind of a Gary Busey impersonation. You, know? you don't understand. I grew up sharing a bedroom with my two sisters. I lived in the dorms all through college and nursing school, and then I got married. I never had a so-called room of my own, a room of one. So when they took the sack off my head and showed me the horde house, horde house, that's horde. Horde. horde house. house, I couldn't believe it. It was so huge, so beautiful. I said, really? Is this really all mine? And they said, no way. Only one room is yours. And you have two weeks to fill it in with garbage and pumpkins and cats before the other contestants, or else you have to live here forever. Thank you very much, Gary Busey. Would you please give the microphone to Little Mike, please? Your husband, Little Mike. Little Mike. I don't think Gary Busey went to nursing school, but I'm just going to have him say that. <laughs> Okay, little Mike, what is your inspiring tale? Frankly, I wasn't sure I could do it. I'd have never hoarded before. I'd never gotten into a screaming match with Gary Busey before. <laughs> I'd never been to Western Massachusetts before. I was just a guy who had tried to make a fortune on penny-farthing motorcycles and failed. <laughs> like everyone else. But then John, John Hodgman was like, Are you going to step up to the plate? Are you going to go the extra yard? Are you going to slam dunk this hoarding competition? And I was like, whoa, if John Hodgman can use sports metaphors, then anything is possible. <laughs> the rules are different now. Maybe I can change. Maybe I can lose 100 pounds, make my family trust me again, and get these thousand amazing smelling Febreze noticeable air fresheners out of this dumpster and into a pile in the middle of the floor. Thank you very much for the mic. So far, the absolute best pronunciation of amazing smelling Febreze noticeable air fresheners that I've ever heard on this or any other stage. Thank you very much. Now, please, uh, Big Mike, would you step forward? I mean, really step forward, right into the light. This is your moment. It's good. Yeah, it's great. Okay. <laughs> Look, I live in a wheelchair. No, I, I don't use a wheelchair. I live in a house shaped like a wheelchair. It was originally a novelty house outside of Atlantic City, and then it was closed due to a scandal, and then it was an insurance office for some years, and then it became a private home. Mine. The point is, I have never lived in a normal house, and I don't have the use of my arms. And despite all of my attempts to get someone to make a reality television show about my house and my arms, only TLC was interested, and then they rejected the pilot. So that is three strikes against me. And if I were to believe the sports metaphors, John Hodgman is constantly yelling in the helmet he makes me wear, <laughs> I'd be out. But you know what? It's been 179 days into a game that I was told would last only two weeks, and I'm still here. I'm still playing. I'm still hoarding, largely with my teeth, which is great, because my hoard item is delicious Kale City kale chips and kale wraps. <laughs> I'm going to be forced to do this. Do any of us really? I'm talking about life now, not just courting. The one thing I do know is that I've changed. I live in a normal shaped house. I have some great new friends. I'm learning to yell into a cell phone while holding it in a foot, uh, holding it a foot from my face all the time. And don't forget, I'm doing all this without arms. Whatever happens next, I'm never going back to the way it used to be. Probably because John Hodgman will kidnap me again and leave me in a field or something. <laughs> Thank you so much to Candace Tracy, Adrian, Tanya, Rob, and Francis. Famous Tracy? Yes. Rematch? Yes. Tonight? Yes. Crow's Nest? Yes. After the uh, mustache formal? Yes. No one needs to skip open mic. Should all go to open mic. Tracy and I have some personal business to attend to. <laughs> So they scrabble rematch what I call the second most dangerous game. 
Uh, I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you very much, everybody. I know it's hard for CMPs to understand this, but you have to get off the stage. Go on. No, you keep those. Keep those. Keep them as little souvenirs of our time together. So one, you wanted to give those back to me after you've taken everything else? <laughs>